I'm Alan Rovarge, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist, and you're watching One Reason Why. Let's talk about self-love, very specifically this idea that you have to love yourself first before you can love another. And I imagine the converse then holds true to say you have to love yourself before you're eligible to be loved. And let's explore this from the point of view of one reason why this is confusing and perhaps even unhelpful. So self-love inherently is important and necessary, especially if you have a history of not knowing your sense of self, not having a strong sense of self. And self-love is about a healthy, positive regard, the ability to know that you can esteem yourself, that you have self-worth. And the result, if you don't have this, is that you lose your sense of self, you're not quite fully present or available to your own experience and unable to assert your likes and dislikes. And in relationship, you uh, find yourself enmeshing, merging, not having good emotional boundaries because you're taking on either who you perceive you're supposed to be which means a kind of false self or a fake self, or you find yourself trying to adapt and to take on who the other person is. And there's a kind of people pleasing component to this where you want to show up in the best light. And so it's kind of like, well, you tell me who I am. You know, I will like what you like. I will be who you want me to be. I am a chameleon. I will adapt. And if you do this enough, there is a quality of self-betrayal or the byproduct of this is a self-betrayal. You're betraying yourself. You're betraying who you need to be, who you are. And in this moment, we'll even use the word true self. You know, how can you be true to yourself. The, the, the word true self is a bit challenging because then there's this idea that there's this other self and your fake self, your true self. Uh, so let's just this idea that you need to be truthful. True self means how can you be more truthful in your presentation of how you show up in this world and how you embody, how you feel that you know who you are, your self-worth, your self-esteem, and then you're able to uh, present that. You're able to lead from that place and you're not confused about having a strong sense of self. Well, chances are, if you grew up in a family where there was a certain amount of dysfunction and a certain amount of uh, non-relating, and you had to accommodate other people other people's emotional needs, other people's dysfunction, other people's mental illness, other people's addictions, uh, in a way to get your emotional needs met or to at least get a minimal level of emotional connection, to, to have a relationship required, you had to deny certain parts of yourself in order to just get to a place of engaging with a loved one or engaging with a family member. So chances are you took this style and it's what we would call in you know popular self-help psychology, this idea of being codependent. Codependent is you're overly focused on other and you're unable to stay grounded and true to your own experience of a self. So when you do this enough, when you betray yourself enough, when you can disconnect from knowing who you are, we could use the phrase and say, well, the byproduct of that is that you are not upholding, you're not treating yourself with enough positive regard, you're not considering your experience enough, and so we'll, we'll conclude and say you don't love yourself. You don't love yourself. 
you need to love yourself more. And there's two parts to that. There's the love, there's the application of kindness and compassion and gentleness, giving yourself the benefit of the doubt, being able to accommodate, knowing your experience. So there's the, the love part of self-love. And then there's the self. There's knowing that you matter, knowing that you are valid, knowing that you are good enough and that in able to assert some kindness towards yourself, you can value that how you want to show up and know that you matter and that you can value who you are as a person, that that is welcome and that you welcome that part of yourself. So if you have a history of struggling to maintain your sense of self in relationship and you enmesh with another person and you merge with another person and you take on these behaviors, uh, a way to try to manipulate yourself in order to uh, what you perceive to be more attractive or what you perceive how you would get attention from the other person and that in fact the other person would not like you, the other person would not stay with you, the other person would not be in relationship with you unless you morph yourself into your version of what you think your version is, is how you're supposed to show up for the other person. So we take that whole dynamic and we just conclude and say, well, you don't love yourself. So a simplistic approach and response to concluding that you're doing this, you don't have a self and you need to love yourself, is to say loving yourself is the most important thing. You need to love yourself first before you can love someone else. Now, there is a component of kitchen table wisdom to that idea. So we're not throwing the baby out with the bath. Why do we say, well, that's a great idea. That's lovely. You know, you've seen it in a Hallmark card. You know, it's a, it's, it's a pithy, nice statement that helps give us some ground and orient. Say, oh yeah, remind, you know, note to self, reminder, I do need to love myself. However, here's the thing, in healing communities, when we are trying to address codependency, when we are trying to address these dysfunctional patterns of relating, uh, the pendulum swings in a rather extreme way. We're saying, well, because you are so unable to know yourself, and you so quickly get mired and uh, connected to other people's drama and other people's lives, and you become overly focused on being a caretaker and not taking care of yourself, it makes sense to say from a healing perspective, you need to have a much stronger boundary to say, no, stop it. Stop getting so overly focused on others and you cannot continue to ignore yourself. And instead of ignoring yourself, you're gonna love yourself. You're gonna practice loving yourself. Again, this is logical. This all makes sense. Great, sign me up. I'm ready to do it. However, if we keep saying that mantra, if we keep, uh, re keep reaffirming that this is the path, this is what I need to do, I need to practice, having a better relationship with myself through kindness and compassion and to, to counter shame, to counter uh, feeling uh, that there's something wrong with me, to counter feeling like I don't matter, I need to instead focus on nurturing a relationship with myself, which, which means nurturing self-love. Now here's the problem with all of this. If we say this enough and there's healing communities, there's this whole culture around saying, well, not only do you need to do this, but this is the number one most important thing to do. And if you don't do this and don't do it in the right way, everything else is secondary. You will not be able to be in relationship. Uh, uh, other people will not necessarily be able to love you until you love yourself. It becomes an if then, you know, if I can love myself, then I can, you know, love someone else. If I can love myself, then I'll be able to show up in relationship and uh, someone else can love me back. Here's one reason why this is confusing. It is too rigid and it pits 
emotional connection with others and letting in the experience of good relating, it pits it against our own personal relationship to how we feel about ourselves as being primary and having connection and love and support from others as being secondary. That, that setup is very dangerous because it goes against the reality of being a human being. And here's the reality of being a human being. You need both. We need both. We don't need to pit them against each other. I do need to cultivate self-love. I do need a plan and a skillful means. I need to, to know how to begin to move into compassionate self. I do need to know how to move into the kindness of self. I might even need to put everything else on hold and do this for a duration of time. This might be a healing chapter and say for this chapter of my life, I really need to focus on self-love is primary. Self-love is very important to cultivate. And I need to create a strong boundary from all these other distractions and begin to return to who am I? I mean, that's at the core of what it means to love yourself. It means to know yourself. And so it's this constant um, uh, inquiry into who am I? Who have I been? Who am I becoming? How do I feel about myself? And to be able, no matter what the answer is, no matter the experience, to be able to say, you know what? I'm doing okay. I'm an okay person. I'm an okay human being, and I'm just in my human being nature and I accept all of it, the whole range, all of my craziness, all of my joy, all of my embarrassment, all of my curiosity, all of my et cetera, et cetera. We lump it all together and go, well, this is my experience of self. And you know what? I like some of it. I don't like other parts of it. But collectively, I can embrace it in a way that is kind in a way that's compassionate, in a way that's gentle. This is about being gentle with yourself. This might be a chapter in your healing work that you need to do. That's wonderful. However, that's not the, the place to stay. You cannot stay here forever or orient that this is the only way to be because you need connection. We need connection beyond just self-love. So here's the challenge is that there's so much, there's so much uh, chatter or clutter or noise, let's call it noise. There's so much noise on the internet. There's so much noise in the self-help communities and in certain books and things that we read, you know, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. There's a bit, the, the, the part I'm focusing on, we know there's some goodness to that, but the noise aspect of that is that it seems to set it up that that is primary and receiving emotional connection, support, love, and being in really healthy emotional uh, relationships with other people, be it a significant other partner, be it a family member, be it a friend, whoever it is. And so we, need both. What I'm offering here and suggesting is we need both. We do need to love ourselves, but we also need to know how to let in the nurturing, the nourishment from other relationships as well. They are not pitted against each other. One is not better than the other. We can, we need both of them. Think of them as different elements to water, to, to, to nourishing the garden. If you have a garden, if you've planted the seeds of self-kindness, if you planted the seeds of being a healthy human being, you're going to need sunshine and you're going to need water to help every, you know, to help the plants and the flowers grow in the garden. And so, Self-love is one element. It could be the water, it could be the sunshine, you decide. But we also need nurturing, positive feedback, encouragement, support, kindness, warmth, connection, resonance. Uh, people who just 
really care about who we are and, and, and people who love us. And that's also an element uh, that help that goes into the garden and together, you know, the garden grows. And to pull out of the analogy or the metaphor and just, you know, talk about your life, that's how you grow into a stronger sense of self. We don't do it isolated, uh, you know, behind the scenes where we are completely 100%, uh, totally self-sufficient. Love yourself and that's all you need. That thinking, that approach, which is very common in a lot of the noise that you will that you will hear um, on different, you know, forum, different, different self-help forums. Um, that's not necessarily helpful. And so heads up, be aware of that. So one reason why this idea that you have to love yourself before you can love someone else is not helpful because it denies that we simultaneously do need the nurturing and nourishment of relationship and love from other people. And we don't need to pit those against each other as one being better or needing, needing to have that first. We need them both simultaneously. I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this YouTube video. Uh, also, you can join a Facebook group uh, called The New Love Addiction if you're interested in talking about this idea with other people. And then lastly, please go to my website, which is alanrovarge.com. Thank you so much.